is this risking a popular backlash and again, you know, citing what's happened in France and in the Netherlands. Um, but the rage really in Britain, I think, is growing now and the budget um, particularly uh, unleashed a real sense of this is a government of the rich for the rich, uh, the cutting corporation tax uh, and so on at the same time as uh, the, the, uh, the huge attacks on working tax credits which are pushing a whole load of uh, working class families in, into, into huge poverty, you know, people told to find extra hours to be able to qualify for, for working tax credit when the jobs are not there, you know, it really gives the sense of a government that is out of touch, uh, a leap that is out of touch. Um, and also the idea that the, all of these things are going to help the economy, that, that cutting, you know, making it easier for, for uh, uh, you know, for, for big business, uh, you know, it's, it's along, you know, along with deregulation of, uh, <coughs> of labour laws and so on, is really uh, adding to that to that sense. Uh, and as we said, you know, the economy is expected to, to contract even further. And the latest jobs figures, although again, you know, you could put the headline, they tried to put a positive slant on it, you know, that the unemployment has seen a slight drop. The reality is that there's a huge increase in part-time work. There's a huge increase in part-time workers looking for full-time work. There's a huge increase in unemployment amongst women. And there's a big increase uh, in, in long-term unemployment, over a million unemployed for over a year and in youth. Uh, long-term youth unemployment and of course you know we've been campaigning on the question of workfare but it gives the lie to that you know that, that these schemes are actually going in any way to help and to relieve the situation really what it is is you've got unrelenting uh, misery uh, being shown uh, and at the same time you know there, there's a growing seems to be a growing you know we have been raising the issue of the uh, this massive accumulation of capital that is just sitting there at the same time as there's, you know, huge uh, uh, unemployment. Uh, and again, you know, just this uh, uh, article in the Telegraph, uh, yes, uh, the, in the last few days, um, in, in response to the, the, the double <coughs> dip, um, it's talking about the, 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 the cash piles. It says, part of the challenge for advanced economies is that companies have lost the confidence to invest and are therefore hoarding profits rather than spending them. In the UK alone, the corporate cash mountain has doubled over the past decade to 754 billion and we kept putting a figure in the paper for what size the cash uh, piles were and then people would write in and say actually we've seen evidence to say it's bigger and it kept on uh, growing. It's a, it's a sum now equivalent to half of GDP um, and much of that growth occurring since the crisis began. Um, and in the US, the UK, the Eurozone and Japan, apparently there's uh, 7.75 trillion uh, in cash or near equivalents in the reserves of capitalism. Um, so that means that excluding China, it's roughly half of uh, the equivalent to roughly half the GDP of the biggest economy in the world in the US is sitting uh, idle. Obviously, the, you know, the, the historic role of capitalism is to invest in, the, in, in production, and that is exactly what it is not doing. Um, and so what do we... What do we say about it? I mean, I think, you know, it gives us a huge opportunity to say <coughs> that the cuts are not necessary, that unemployment is not uh, necessary, that we should say, you know, to use it, to demand um, uh, a capital tax of at least 50%. I mean, I think that has got to be something that we start to uh, use regularly, that, you know, they could use that uh, amount to cancel the debts of Greece, of Ireland, <coughs> Portugal, Spain, etc. But also linking the use of that money in investing in a massive programme of public works, linking that to the need to nationalisation. You know, we wouldn't just leave it there, but to link it and give the illusions that that by itself would be enough just to unleash the capital, but to link it to the need uh, for, for nationalisation of the commanding heights of the economy and also to introduce, uh, of course, a, you know, a democratic planned uh, socialist <coughs> economy, um, you know, by way of actually uh, making, making it... Uh, 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 lasting uh, and, and, and control over it. Um, but it's not just on the economy that the condemns are under pressure, as I, as I headlined. You know, the latest round of the Murdoch Gate uh, saga is coming closer and closer to Cameron. Jeremy Hunt um, seems likely, you know, there's growing pressure for him to be for the chop. Uh, uh, the big pressure now for, um, to order, on Cameron to order an inquiry into breaches of ministerial code after the emails and texts and stuff between uh, 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 the Department for Culture, Media and Sport 
um, and the communications with, with Murdoch over the B Sky B bid uh, have come out and again reveals how out of touch. There was a thing in the paper last week showing um, that Jeremy Hunt is seen as really popular um, by Tory MPs. He's seen as you know a really good face for the Tory party because one of the reasons that they gave is that he goes into Tesco's and talks to shoppers in the fruit and veg aisle. Um, <laughs> but the poll yesterday revealed the true situation, which is uh, five to one uh, in favour of uh, Hunt to resign. Um, two to <coughs> one, the Comrades poll just out it last night. Two to one margin, uh, by, by two, a two to one margin, uh, the respondents thought that the government is incompetent and uh, but, uh, uh, a ratio of 67 to 21 uh, percent thought that uh, Cameron and Osborne were completely out of touch with ordinary people. Um, and, it, you know, people are a bit sick of the whole Murdoch scandal, but it just reinforces again and again the fact that this uh, 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 government is, is a government uh, acting in the interests of the rich. Um, but what is the vehicle by which to act on that? Because the, you know, the... Miliband is making some clever little speeches in Parliament um, in response to, 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 to the situation. But, you know, is he going to drive home the advantage? It's almost certainly not. He's missed so many opportunities. Um, and as I said, you know, Labour is likely to make gains at the election, but not on the basis of huge enthusiasm. Um, uh, but before I just say, before I go on to say a bit more about uh, uh, that uh, and the elections. Um, I wanted to say just something about the SNP and Scotland because uh, Alex Salmond in Scotland, I mean it's obviously a bit far away from us here in the South East, the South West, but it is important because he has captured, the SNP has captured some of that opposition uh, to austerity, to the Tories and, and, and to you know, Labour being seen as, a, as, as, as you know, the, you know, another Tory party in Scotland. Um, and, you know, as we see in Europe, in Spain, in Belgium, around the world, you know, the savage austerity does drive, is a, is a driver of, you know, issues around the national question. Um, and in January particularly, Cameron, you know, made a you know, very heavy-handed blunder where he, um, you know, kind of, from Westminster, sort of, in, you know, tried to impose on Scotland what kinds of a referendum they would have regarding independence, saying it would only be one question on independence or not, that he would set the time, that he would set, you know, that, that Westminster would control it and so on. And in response to that, figures were out that the SNP membership was up by 4,000 in that month. Um, and the, the thing is that all the three other parties uh, are, are, in, you know, come, come in behind Cameron on that question. Um, and it, I just raise this because I think it shows another way, you know, that we've got to raise our uh, our program, and another way that we've got to talk about putting this, the uh, labour movement uh, to the fore, because um, we we call in Scotland for a labour movement conference to discuss the question, to advocate a multi, you know, we would advocate a multi-option referendum, you know, in reality, you know, <coughs> more powers as a legitimate expression of how do we get out of the crisis, but we're, you know. Uh, uh, Murdoch has been exposed, uh, I'm sorry, not Murdoch, uh, Salmond has been exposed now with these dealings with uh, Murdoch around the B, B Sky B bid as well, you know, claiming that it was all about jobs, but in reality, you know, it doesn't look like that to ordinary people. But also, <coughs> earlier this week, coming out and saying that one of the things he would do to make Scotland, uh, for Scotland's economy, would be to cut corporation tax further, and, um, you know, kind of reveals the true situation. So, you know, we, we'd say that in a, a you know, labour movement needs a, a workers' manifesto for how it would use uh, devolved powers for the working class, the question of nationalisation of energy, job creation, of ab abolition of the anti-trade union laws, but also linked to the question of, you know, the need to build a mass working class party and uh, the link to, 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 to socialism. But, I mean, that was just a sort of a side issue, which I thought was a, a good way of raising uh, those, those questions. Um, I hope Comrade will come in on sort of Perspectives, because I know the Lib Dems have been, a, you know, a major factor in the southwest. But apparently, you know, according to one of the latest polls, three percent of people who responded thought that the Lib Dems were led by people with real ability. So it doesn't really go very well for them for the economy and uh, for the elections. And it, but it, you can see them trying to make up ground again with uh, one of the uh, Lords, Lord Oakshot, uh, coming out and saying, you know, coming out kind of against austerity, saying that it was. 
<coughs> self-harm, you know, to carry on without changing. Um, and then also in terms of other uh, vehicles for, for opposition, the Greens will be seen by some as a viable alternative. But again, they've shown their hand to a limited extent in, in Brighton very quickly um, where they got control of the council. And, you know, there they, uh, their first uh, response was to, you know, say that against the cuts, but then when it came to the budget, they proposed raising council tax. When that was stymied by the uh, Tories and Labour, they then have voted you know, those plans to, to make uh, quite savage uh, cuts. Um, so, you know, going into this election, none of the parties are popular. There has been, there is this crisis of uh, legitimacy, uh, general disaffection. I don't know if anyone's been reading this column in The Guardian of this... Um, guy who started in John O'Groats and he's making his way down the country to see if people are, how people are voting, what's the interest in the council elections, and the overwhelming response that he's getting is, what's the point kind of thing. And it's little wonder, I know that uh, comrades in the South West have been doing a lot of campaigning around the issue of the NHS, and there, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, writ large really, again, the, you know, the huge <coughs> crisis, the huge threat now that the Act uh, has become law, a product of the economic conjuncture where, you know, privatisation is seen really as the only surefire way of uh, big business to, to be able to turn a profit where uh, 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 con consumption has been so depressed because of the, the cuts. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, again, it would be, a, you know, a platform for, for Labour to, to present themselves as, a, as an opposition. But Andy Burnham, for example... I think he spoke at uh, the health conference, and they, you know, they come out against the, or like a, a you know, they come out against this um, so-called 20 billion of cuts of what the government calls savings, but they can't really come out forcefully against privatisation because they went for it big time. They provided the platform, uh, obviously, for for what the uh, the government uh, is now doing. But I think the situation is summed up in a nutshell, really, by this scandal of um, Newham Council in East London with the uh, really social, you know, social cleansing, a huge housing, housing crisis where there was no houses uh, built for decades by either Labour or the Tories. Um, 5,000 fantastic houses being built for the Olympics, but none of them going to go to, to people in, in housing need in, in the boroughs where they're being built. Um, but I don't know... If, People have seen it, but they've got these people being basically sent up to uh, Stoke, 160 miles away. And you've had uh, the housing minister, the Tory housing minister, coming out and condemning Newham Council for doing this. They're then blaming the uh, Tory government for the cuts in housing benefit, the cuts that they imposed on, on the councils, and so on. But the um, the uh, you know the point is that it makes it absolutely explicit how Labour is carrying out uh, thoroughly. The, uh, the every every dot and comma of the cuts. So you've got the cold cruelty of the Tories and the utter bankruptcy of, of Labour writ large. But of course, you know we are offering an alternative, um, which is you know what I want to just briefly come on to. Um, <clears throat> the uh, the Tusk campaign. Um, cause there's not elections everywhere, but we you know, look forward to hearing about what's happening in the in the areas here that are standing. But it is a fantastic. You know, what we've done through build, patiently building the, the trade unionist and socialist coalition, a step towards a new mass workers' party, which is, you know, a huge, the absence of which is a huge factor weighing down on the situation, uh, it, it has been really, really uh, good. Um, you know, as comrades will have seen in the paper, we've, we're standing uh, Tony Mulhern in Liverpool having a really big effect, 350 people at a meeting there on Thursday. We're standing in London um, as part of the uh, London-wide list for the Assembly, not for the Mayor, uh, unfortunately, but that's where you work in a, a, you know, in a coalition with different groups with vetoes and so on. But it's having a, a you know, where we can reach people, it's having a fantastic effect. Um, like, like on Thursday we had almost 100 people at a meeting in Wolfen Forest come to hear uh, Bob Crow speak, which is, you know... Not the norm, <laughs> I have to say. But we've got a big problem where we're putting forward, you know, a really good programme of anti-cuts and so on. When we can speak to people, it has a big effect. 
uh, but th there is a massive uh, press uh, blackout, so that's very difficult. Um, and uh, sorry, I'm just running out of time now. But finally, you know, having Bob Crow speak at it kind of spelt out in a lot of ways, you know, the, the situation because you know he made very good points about the role that the RMT played in 107 years ago in you know building the Labour Party, the need you know to to uh, to to. to um, to, to stand against privatisation, the anti-union laws and so on. But not all trade union leaders are like the RMT or the PCS. Um, and a big barrier is presented to developing the struggle um, despite the crisis faced by the, you know, the condemns and uh, Labour to an extent. A big barrier is presented by the, the right-wing trade union leadership, um, which you know, brings us on to the pensions battle because you know we are now in the run-up as I said to May the 10th and um, the pensions battle has been the centrepiece of the struggle where all public sector workers were affected at the same time and we had the huge and magnificent events of last year which I think really uh, obviously the party responded really well to that we did you know really well out of um, the, the strikes on the 30th of June and the 30th of November and it was very uh, difficult then when there was a, the, the pause. We are now on course for half a million uh, to come out on the 10th of May. Um, sorry. Uh, oh yeah, and if that hadn't been the case, oh, if that hadn't, thank you. <laughs> if that hadn't been the case, you know, had it, it you know, the, uh, the right wing union signing up to the heads of agreement with the government. If that had have sort of, um, you know, stalled the uh, the campaign, it would have been a big setback. But that is not the case. Um, but it was a threat. Uh, but now we've got the situation with uh, PCS, with Unite in Health, um, with uh, NIPSA, with now the UCU as of yesterday, um, coming out on the 10th of, of May, uh, and also with the situation with the GMB is balloting. And you know what we've got is a situation where there is pressure coming from uh, below, but we've also got prevarication, for example, in the NUT, where the leadership is not confident. But really, there's no basis for a lack of confidence. When the NUT came out in London on the uh, 28th of March, there was a very big response, and it was an overwhelming mood uh, for national action. You know, you could even see it with the placards that we were given out. We had all sort of various placards, but the ones that were being taken up were the ones that said, uh, all strike together, national action now, uh, and so on. And, uh, you know, talking to people, you've got the sense that there has been a real debate in the schools, a real questioning, you know, there's a real, um, you know, there is a weakness of the structures in the unions, but a real uh, uh, discussion taking place about how to take uh, things forward. And, you know, teachers and all public sector workers are beset on all sides. The pension is the unifying issue, but at the same time, you've got the regional uh, pay question, you've got the uh, uh, workload question, you've got bullying. I mean, the schools are, are, are taking strike action at the moment on on some of those issues uh, 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 as well. Um, but now the, uh, the uh, National Coordinated Action has now been reignited, which is uh, really significant. Um, uh, but uh, I'm sorry, I just wanted to say as well on the, on the question of the, the, the teachers. I mean, the figure's been out this week that there's uh, 10,000, now 10,000 less teachers as a result of, of the cuts and so on. But there is also, at the conference, um, there was a you know meeting of a new sort of rank and file organisation um, of associations, which are like uh, branches in the NUT, and that I think is, is significant. And again, in the Sparks dispute, we saw the um, you know the, the rank and file organisation really having an effect on the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the the leadership, but of course leadership as well. Uh, where you know that's in a, in a situation where the leadership is lagging behind. It's not you know it's a, it, we're going to balance it out. But it definitely shows the potential um, for the National Shop Stewards Network. And I think you know the conference coming as it does a month after you know the 10th of May. It's, we've really got to have that in our sights as something that we prepare for, uh, and and that we see it you know as the role that it has played over the last year with the uh, the lobby of the TUC being an impetus to the calling of the 30th of November strike and a huge. Uh, potential um, for it to continue to develop in that way, and there is massive discontent. I mean, in all, you know, the um, you know, 
the public sector has taken action, but we've also seen really kind of, I think, largely inspired by that, that there has been private sector, uh, the MMP uh, packaging workers in, uh, in, the north, in the northwest, the, uh, the Sparks, as we said, you know, and other groups and sections of workers sort of taking inspiration from seeing those huge strikes. Um, so, you know, we know that there is a definite uh, a mood and we've got to develop that. Um, so I'll just finish, really. So, uh, you know, there is the question that is posed, really, is, is this austerity going to, just pure austerity, going to last um, forever? And I think we'd have to say that there's, you know, potential, definitely, the government is absolutely terrified of making concessions, but at the same time, they could be forced to change by fear of being being pushed being pushed out. So I think that, you know, that is a context uh, for the discussion, but it also puts a big emphasis on the need to build our party and to raise our programme and to raise it boldly um, because there is a rage developing but there's also, you know, it's a confused, it's a consciousness is, is very, very varied um, with lots of different layers and, you know, hope to hear about the reports of, you know, discussions that are taking place. Um, but there is massive, I mean, like I just had a report from the NUS conference which has been a, you know, a horrible place for the comrades to go to and intervene in. But, uh, and it's been controlled completely by the right wing. This year we had, you know, big, you know, 2010 there was a huge demonstration and um, kind of uh, attacked really um, by the uh, NUS leadership at the time. Um, uh, then and the movement, you know, not kind of supported by the NUS leadership. This few weeks ago we had the calling of a walkout, which was a total, total uh, write-off by the leadership with no preparation made at all. But then at the NUS conference, there's a, again sort of been a mood for, there's overwhelming support for a, a demo in the autumn, but also the left apparently won all the major debates and stuff, so you can see there's another straw in the wind of the potential for, you know, things from below to have an effect uh, on the leaderships, on some, on some of these right-wing uh, leaderships. But also, you know, we should take inspiration, I think, from how um, rage can find uh, uh, an expression. Um, like, for example, what's happened in Ireland with the household tax campaign, where you know a few weeks ago, three thousand people met um, in, in the uh, in, in Dublin as part of that campaign. You know that is uh, unprecedented, really, in the recent period in Ireland. Uh, com you know, despite all the huge attacks, and then just um, you know, despite the government's bullying and threats and so on. Uh, 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 this, this big non-payment campaign developing. So I think you know we should prepare for um, think you know opportunities like that to come our way. Um, and just I suppose to finish, we need to also develop the question of how we express and talk about the socialist alternative as we're you know involved in all of these campaigns because that's going to be increasingly the question that is posed. You know, privatisation, the destruction of the NHS, all of these things. You know, it's li linked to uh, where we started, that capitalism is crisis, uh, and what is the alternative?